What's up, everybody? This is Marshall Lee of DonkeyJobProjects.com and of the getting gaining popularity gaining popularity <laughs> Instagram channel uh, Zillustrations, as well as Marshall Lee. And I hear a Peter. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Just press live, so we're live. So everything you say and do here will be accounted for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll watch my language. Uh <laughs> <laughs> You're under art arrest. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Doing all right. It's, uh, you know, I don't know. It's been three or four days since I've been able to do a proper art cast. I did do the one with Chris earlier um, this week on his channel, uh, but people on my channel don't know that. So I'm trying to be as consistent <laughs> as I can with these things, you know? Yeah. It's, I know how tough it could be. Just working on a schedule. Yes, sir. So what are you doing up this ungodly hour? <laughs> um Yeah, well what, what, what is it? What was it? Um the other night I didn't sleep good at all. Uh half the reason my cats decided to uh revolt um a couple times during the night. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, it, you know, it's like, I did get, you know, I went to sleep early. And, uh, so I woke up early. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Yeah. I, uh, you know, that's why I call it the early bird art cast. So hopefully you'll get, uh, hopefully that means you're going to get some mad art done, you know? Uh, we shall see. We shall see. Uh, I've been trying to improve my streaming and just becoming more and more frustrated. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like it's one thing to do a hangout. It's another thing to do like uh, like a normal stream. Um like, you know, I'm using OBS and um, so you could design the screen um, and that, you know, then then my artwork that I'm working on comes out, um, <laughs> you know, the correct way, not upside down. Um, but, yeah, I've just been having problems with it. I don't know. I, <clears throat> I think it's... Uh, in part due to limitations of my current PC. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, technology is a freaking pain. And I'll be honest, if it wasn't for having my phone, like I don't know. I know you don't have like a smartphone, but maybe one day you'll get one because that's like a lifesaver to me. Because like when, if nothing else works, my phone usually so. You know, I kind of lean on that when I need to. So I, I have the same situation. Crappy internet, crappy, you know, computer, so. Yeah, well, you know, it's like I, I got the improved internet, but it's not doing me any good with this PC, so. <laughs> yeah. Good old technology. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just in my head. I'm constantly going back and forth on what I should do, but uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay. That you will, sir. That you will. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, my my computer does what it's supposed to do today. <laughs> I've been um, I've been kind of struggling, like with like my. I don't know, my um, Clip Studio and, and, and my tablet sometimes. Well, it's not Clip Studio, it's just my tablet. It's just been being weird sometimes. Like, it'll switch to a certain mode where, like, only my mouse works or only my, 
like my pen doesn't respond with, with the program or whatever. It's just weird. It's a weird glitchy thing, and it, it probably has something to do with whatever I'm clicking that's wrong, you know. But um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's just kind of how it works. Yeah, it might. You know, it might be doing the hangout and working on Clip Studio. It might be draining, yeah. <laughs> draining your PC. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've had the, it was just like I clicked on something weird and because, um, you know, this was happening when I wasn't even on, you know, yeah. online or whatever. So, oh, well. So, anyways, um, I was looking at my little Google alerts because I got the uh, comic industry news um, alert that I, I check out from time to time and, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm tra- now I'm forgetting what what I read, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know they were talking about like they were kind of discussing it. I don't know if it's really news because I don't think anything's happening with it necessarily. But um, they were discussing whether you know stuff shows like Daredevil and stuff would be um, whatever kind of mix with the the um, MCU, you know, um, actual, like, movies and stuff like that. I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, it would be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, it depends what they're going to do going forward. You know, um, Disney's going to have, I think they're going to call it Disney Play, which is their streaming service they're going to be doing next year. Um. And you know, just just recently, Iron Fist and uh, Luke Cage were canceled from Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, so there might be kind kind of some power play going on. I think <laughs> there might be. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I have a hard time imagining that. Uh, whatever this thing is that Disney's trying to roll out as far as streaming will be like successful. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it is Disney, so you don't, you know, it's hard, it's hard to kind of say they won't be successful, but um, I don't know, like to me, how many people want to add another streaming service to their stuff? It's true. I mean, you know, it's like I know there's like Amazon, there's Hulu, um, besides Netflix. Um, now there's Warner Brothers. Um, and all of them get subscribers, you know, they're, they're not like zero numbers. I don't know. I don't know how well they're doing. Um, but I imagine if, if Disney throws in a bunch of stuff that isn't available elsewhere or that some people will, you know, much like Patreon, <laughs> you know, some people will subscribe for a while just to, to uh, get exclusive stuff and then opt out uh, once they get their full. So, yeah. I mean, that's been my issue anyways with um, like, that's why I, I don't watch Game of Thrones because uh, I'm hearing an echo. I don't know if it's from your end, but um, yeah, I don't watch Game of Thrones because I don't have HBO subscription, you know, um, and I can't afford to get it. Like, I have enough subscriptions. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have anything else open, so I don't know where the echo is coming from. I got my headset on, so yeah, it's gone now, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it. I think I think they will be successful because they are Disney, and you know, it's just people that love Disney. You know, it, it's like if you got kids, it's it's great to uh, just get that subscription and and let them watch all that stuff because you're pretty, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed that it will be for kids. You know, as opposed to throwing them onto Netflix where, you know, half the stuff is hardcore horror or whatever. 
yeah. That's a good point. Um, you know, they always have that kid angle, I guess. But uh, I don't know. I, I mean, with the streaming, are they shooting for that, though? Like, I don't know, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, it's it's all a wait and see. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not too worried about the financial pockets. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I think you know, regardless of what they do, they'll succeed uh, to some degree. So, yeah. Um, some people are in the chat: J James GSR, Dave Hingley, um, Adam Lore. What's up, guys? Um, hey, hey. <laughs> hey uh, James says, I can't afford all these streaming services, which makes me wonder how well all these new ones are going to do. Um, Dave, really, Marsh, you think, <laughs> you think the largest company, uh, media company in the world will have problems running a streaming service? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of did say, like, I kind of did backpedal at one point, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it is Disney, but Disney hasn't succeeded at everything, so you never know. Um, yeah. have to say that DC is the one I'd like to sub to. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Now, yeah. I'm not convinced, but I do predict a consumer revolt at some point about having to continue to pay for content. Yeah, I mean, eventually it's going to be... It's going to be like, um, I mean, for me, the reason why I have these streaming services is because I don't want full on cable. Like I don't have, I can't afford it. So at least I have the streaming services. I originally had, you know, the Netflix discs that came in the mail, you know, and then eventually they opened up their streaming services. And I was like, eventually I realized why I don't need these discs anymore. So I just quit with that, you know, and, um, some people don't even remember the discs, <laughs> but uh, so there's that. And, and, you know, we just canceled our, our cable because it was so freaking stupid expensive. So, um, yeah, I, I imagine there would be like a revolt, but eventually they're going to get cable money out of us probably somehow, some way. There's going to be some kind of bundling of streaming services. At least this is what I think, but I don't really know. Um, let's see. James says, I think they're hurting themselves by having too many. Dave, here in the UK, we have to buy a TV license, 120 um, whatever pounds a year, I guess. And then you might have cable or satellite TV, and then you have streaming as well. Hard pass. Interesting. Is 120 pounds a year a lot? Like, that seems like a pretty good price. Um, we, we have to pay, like, almost that per month <laughs> of dollars sometimes you know if you get like the full bundle of internet and cable and whatnot and you can add stuff on and stuff and adam lore says his illustrations looks great thanks man <laughs> um yeah i don't i don't know what the pound us to the us dollars is but i i think it's pretty close so maybe that's close to 100 bucks um, you know, I got a new, new, uh, internet provider. And so I have a home phone, uh, internet and yeah, some sort of cable package, but I don't even have a TV. So <laughs> I only got it because, um, it's actually cheaper as a bundle which is weird and idiotic and to some degree, but, um, you know, eventually I'll get a TV and, and, you know, set it up. But, uh, you know, I, I can, I can actually watch it through my computer. You know, if I want to turn on, I don't know, AMC or HGTV or whatever. Right. That's cool. That works. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's a that actually is a really interesting um, point too. Though, like, yeah, not everybody's even watching it on an actual TV. <laughs> Which is cool. I mean, I've watched stuff on my phone and whatnot. I I don't typically do that, but I have. 
Yeah, I never thought I would. Like, you know, I have my Kindle. Um, so it's it's bigger than a phone, not as big as a computer. But, um, you know, if I, I watch things on it simply because I had my Kindle when I wasn't home. And I was like, oh, I want to check this out. So I'll start watching something and get into it. <laughs> so, um, that's cool. Um, so I, I mean, an obvious question though is, I heard you uh, you watched that old Daredevil show for mid season. How what you think? Uh, man, I loved it. Um, yeah. yeah, if you're if you're a fan of Daredevil and you read a lot of the comics, you'll definitely get a real kick out of it. Um, you know, it just. It sort of hits all the notes. Um, it it's such a good season, and it's like I I watched a, a review on uh, YouTube uh, regarding like the season three, and and they're like, well now they can you know cancel the show. It's like the perfect ending kind of thing. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> but it, it yeah, it, it was so so good. Um, it's a slow start, um, but it really develops, and and like you know, it, Kingpin is awesome in it, and uh, you know, I mean, I guess it's not really a spoiler, but you know, Bullseye's in it because you know it's it's all over the freaking internet, um, yeah. and uh, you know the the. Just the whole cast is is so good and and it's so well done. Um, it's not like you know, it's not like a a, a movie experience because it's yeah, it is like thirteen episodes and um, it's really plays out over the thirteen episodes. Um, but I I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I'm you know we we were we actually went on a um, on a Harry Potter binge this weekend, so <laughs> um, we probably would have been watching that if we didn't. But you know, I didn't really know. I guess I did know it was kind of coming out, but uh, I don't know. My wife suggested Harry Potter, and I just went with it. I mean, I love Harry Potter, so, you know, yeah. a big argument for me for that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the um, I think that's next. We, we've been talking about watching it, so. so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, like, Friday, I totally did forget it was coming on. Um, and so it was like, I, I guess I started late that night. I was just like looking around, and I was like, "Oh, Dado! Oh, yeah! Let me go watch the first episode or something." And I watched like the first two right off the bat, and before I knew it, I mean, I think I think I I watched all thirteen within forty eight hours, and yeah. it's like, which is pretty insane because I don't normally do that at all. Um, but I just got into it so much, and it's, it's, it was so worth it. <laughs> really? So you don't tend to be a binge watcher? Uh, stuff? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I could binge, but normally I space it out <laughs> yeah. over a week like, or something. Like to take some time and enjoy it. Yeah, it's like you know, because there's a lot to soak in, and I mean, um. Even though you could watch 13 episodes in a row <laughs> with maybe a couple of breaks, yeah. um, to really, like, I don't know, enjoy it. I mean, you know, it's like I grew up on comics, and, and that's, like, a similar thing. It's like, yeah, you could read a couple of trades um, of, of a comic and, and get through it all, but um, it is created as a, as a serial kind of thing where, you know, like cliffhangers and, and um, 
you know, if if you live with a story for a while, it sometimes is more enjoyable. Yeah, no doubt. I can't help myself. Like, if there's something I want to watch, I just end up binging it. Um, <laughs> usually, like whenever Stranger Things comes out, there's no way I'm not like spending the whole weekend on that, watching it once, maybe twice. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great show. So, um, and same thing. I mean, Daredevil will probably, you know, it'll probably since we're starting it in the middle of the week. If it was the weekend, we'd be done with it in the weekend, but. Um, since we're starting, you know, probably during the week, uh, you know, it'll take us a couple days for sure. A few days. <laughs> so what Harry Potter were you, were you watching the, the original movies? Yep. We watched the whole series. We actually, we have a little bit to go on the, on the last movie to, um, probably tonight, I guess. Um, and then we'll be done. So we went through. Actually, we didn't watch the first two, which is weird. We started because we always like. I guess when whenever we start, we always like start with the first one. But then a lot of times we never can. We don't continue all the way through. Hmm. And we say we're gonna do it. So um, ended up starting like three movies in for whatever real weird reason. And um, yeah. And then we went through all of them. So. <laughs> There's, yeah, there's a lot to be learned in those stories, you know, for storytelling for our comics and stuff too, for sure. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, I love the books, and the the movies are are pretty true to to the books. Um, so the first two are kind of like just setting up the rhythm, you know. The second one, from what I I recall was very similar to the first one. So by jumping in on the third one, I, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love, probably my favorite are the first two. Um, and yeah, I read, we read all the books and stuff too. Um, I don't remember any of the books hardly though, except for the last few, um, for whatever reason, it's maybe it's just because it was so long ago that I read them, I don't know, but um but yeah yeah I, I love the first couple movies though in books because especially the the movies um are more fresh in my mind but um i love them because they to them really up until up until the half-blood prince those are all my favorite like the ha the Half Blood Prince on, they get darker, more serious, which is cool, and I enjoy it. But um, you know, I really like the the charm of the f first movies um, more, and um, they're really really good stories, like one shot stories. When you get into the Half Blood Prince and the uh, the Deathly Hallows movies, um, you know, they they have like they're trying to kind of weave it all together and, and finish it up and and it's good, but it's not as like concisely told story, I guess, you know, so it's still pretty good. Yeah, you know, I, I totally get that because, yeah, it's, it's like you could you could watch the, the first batch and just go go away thinking like, you know, feeling the whole joy of that universe. Mm -hmm. and, and then when it gets deeper and, and darker, it's like, you know, then <laughs> it's a whole different feel. For sure. Um, let's check out if there's anything new in the chat here. Um, Dave Hingley says it's about $150 per year. That doesn't seem too bad. Wow. And James says I'm paying 150 per month for cable and internet. Yeah, I... That's why I only have internet because I, I cannot pay that. That's it's just ridiculous. The only reason I'd want cable that that makes me wish I had cable is so I could watch you know my football during football season. But I'll be honest, I can get most of the games with an antenna, and you know this year I haven't even been paying attention. I have no clue how my favorite team is even doing because <laughs> um, I'm just too busy making art. But um. But yeah, uh, 
yeah, it's, it's stupid expensive for cable here. Um, yeah, I'm paying. Cable in a heartbeat if my wife didn't use it. YouTube is what I watch. Gotcha. What did you say? Uh, um, yeah, I pay about 100 myself, so. Yeah, it's crazy. James says, no spoilers. <laughs> I don't think we did. <laughs> on Netflix has been great, a great ride so far. Hope it keeps up the excitement. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Me too. Um, well, I didn't really like the second season that much, but um, we'll get into that in a minute a little bit. Um, <laughs> looks like Daniel Liebert's in here. What's up, dude? Um, like button is for something, people. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, maybe hit the like button, which, yeah, I'm all for that. Hit the thumbs up or thumbs down. Either way, it helps the channel. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wind I wind my wife up by cheering when Doby dies. Oh no! I was like, I was actually a little choked up again when he died this time. But <laughs> <laughs> my wife that always definitely gets choked up. But yeah, it, sometimes I do that too. Though there's certain things where I know my wife is sensitive and I can't help but kind of wind her up a little bit. <laughs> um so if you have set up okay i'm doing all right daniel thanks for asking um so uh let's see oh yeah so i wanted to say um you know what what did you think as far as this season of daredevil compared to the other seasons because like i said i'm i like the first one a lot the second one was just a little too harsh for me um but it was fine, whatever. I, I watched it. I'll, I only need to watch it once. I'm good. Um, I might still watch it again, though. Who knows? But and we'll see what's the third one. So what did you think this season compared to the others? Um, it's like, I, you know, it's like my memory is give and take. It's, it's like some things I, I remember word for word. Some things I, I just get a gist of a feeling. It's like I barely remember the second season. Um, although I, I remember I liked it, you know, but, um, you know, it had Electra in it and, um, I mean, Electra is, yeah, and Punisher, um, Electra oh, is a kind of the third or second season. Second. Didn't the second oh, season have Electra? Yeah. Um, yeah, so. you know, she's a character I love, love, love from, from the comic and, you know, it was barely... Electra in the in the show, <laughs> you know they they had some of the storyline, but it was like, you know, it was enjoyable, but it wasn't what it could have been. Much like the Daredevil movie with Electra, it was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, yeah, Punisher, uh, Kingpin, um, I, I guess. Season two was uh, the whole Punisher Kingpin fight in jail happened, right? Yeah, Kingpin. I know was. In, I don't remember a lot either. And I tried to watch like the recap or whatever, and the recap sucked. Like it didn't even show, like it didn't even show Punisher even once. And I'm like, wait, like isn't he like the main part of that? that season? Like. <laughs> Is it is it is it a a Netflix created recap? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah, I guess so. Because uh, because uh, mm. I don't remember it that well either. I just remember Punisher, and it was brutal. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, <laughs> it, it, there's lots of brutal things in season three. Um. And it's like, yeah, sometimes sometimes it's a little farther than I would like. Um, you know, I'm not so much against against some good fights and, and brutality, but um, I don't. You know, it's not necessarily necessary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, I mean, I grew up on action movies and craziness, and I mean, I love you know. Um, Terminator and all this stuff like, you know, Bruce Lee yeah. movies and things like that. Like I'm, I love action. I love fights and you know, stuff like that. But 
this was just like a little bit more for more than I like in my you know taste my tastes or whatever but um you know I, I enjoyed it enough but you know there was some points where I was just like ah I think I'm, I'm I think I don't feel like going that far with that kind of stuff, but you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm sure, I think a lot, I'm one of the few who has that complaint, you know, everybody pretty much liked that part of it. So well, there's definitely, definitely a, a lot of brutal things that happened in the third season. You know, ho hopefully you, you, you'll watch it and go, yeah, that was, you know, that's brutal, but man, that's, Kind of awesome at the same time. <laughs> um, you know, I just love, love, loved uh, Bullseye in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he's been a favorite DC villain. I mean, DC villain. Uh, <laughs> Daredevil villain. Um, and uh, they did him so good in the show now mind you it's not not exactly the character that's in the comic that's in the show but close enough yeah you know, much as long as they tell a good story to me like and yeah you know it's somewhat you know reflective of the, i mean of the comic then i'm usually okay with it personally yeah But yeah, I I highly recommend it. If you like Daredevil, check it out. Um, yeah, it's good entertainment. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, second season was too harsh for me. Also, says James. Mm -hmm. um, Punisher is not one of my faves. Oh, okay, he brings down the real heroes in my opinion. I could see that. Yeah. Um, compared with. Uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, it's a walk in the park. Huh. I'm not sure what, what that means, because that's what Daniel said. Um, oh, or, oh, it's Game of Thrones, actually. But, yeah, my bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, Game of Thrones, like, I watched, I did watch the first season, and, um, you know, I kind of liked it, but I was like, this is like, this is like um, Lord of the Rings, except for without all the cool, like, magic-y stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, why does everybody love this? Um, but I guess they get into, you know, some stuff later on. But, you know, obviously people like it. I do want to watch it. Uh, I, I I love Game of Thrones. Um, and that's a show that's, that's very, very br brutal at times. Um I love it because it's like, you know, it really plays out the the different families and kingdoms and you know how they really rub away and take over other people's land and you know all that kind of really fun stuff like, you know, I'm I'm not so much of a a follower of fantasy per se. Um, it's into it, into it, uh, in a in a entertaining and almost eh, so. I, that's a yeah, and I think that's a big part of their their um, market. Really, is people who would be embarrassed to say they like Lord of the Rings. Not that that's what you are, but, um, you know, <laughs> that I think there's, or maybe they don't like Lord of the Rings. They don't want all that like nerdy stuff, but they'll watch Game of Thrones. Cause it's almost like, you know, it's, it's more akin from what I can tell to something more like the Sopranos or like, um, Sons of Anarchy, you know, it's like something everybody can kind of get into, which, I don't know why crime is something everybody can get into, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, you know, it's like I am a fan of Lord of the Rings, but, you know, it's like I know people that are like diehard fantasy people. And, and you know, I tend to be more 
either comic book superhero stuff or sci-fi along those lines. So not not everything that that's fantasy that's popular I go check out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Games of Thrones. It's just really, really well done, you know, uh, yeah. until the end. <laughs> you know, it, did, it, that, it, did it finish as a series or is it no, you just talking not, about the current end? Well, it, it, it lost its, its way a little mm-hmm. bit in the last uh, season and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it is, I believe it is going to end. Like, there was half a season that they did that's continued, I believe, next year. Uh, and that will be the end. I, th- I think they're going to wrap it up. Um, because there, there's no there's no more books to go by. Yeah. So uh, they're going to finish the story as they think it should be finished or they want to finish it or whatever. Right. Man, I'm really hating what I'm making right now. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is this for something? No, this is just drawing around. I mean, it, it would go on my illustrations if it was any good, but it's not. So, <laughs> so with- um, I, I just want to, I, I think what I'm realizing is that I really like to start traditionally and then I can bring that in um, digitally and because like this stage right here maybe I'll get used to it but I was trying to kind of do a painting approach and then draw over it but I feel like the basis of of my skill is in you know penciling and inking and then you know the coloring I can do afterwards and get into but yeah i don't know i know a lot of people use um and maybe i think this is a, a clip paint function to where you can get um like uh, a 3d figure um and just just pose it the way you want to pose it uh do s- some simple lighting effects, and then you can draw over that. Um, so maybe... Yeah, yeah. I don't see to me that... And maybe I'll change one day. Maybe I'll have an illustration job where I have to get something done and I'll do it anyways. But um, that to me seems a little bit too cheaty for me. You know, <laughs> I understand that other people do it. Some people base their whole styles off of literally copying, copying photos, which I think is ridiculous. But, um, you know, to each his own, you know, there is an art even to that, but it's not something I'm comfortable with doing yet. Well, I, yeah, I understand. I, I say it simply because then at least, you know, you could bounce off the, uh, the initial structure of it. You know, I know, I know digitally, like I, I tried to just go into a, a, a program like, Clip Paint or other programs, and just start drawing, and it becomes so like yeah, like I don't know how to flesh out a drawing, let's say, uh, digitally, because yeah. because I you know my focus is all wrong, and it it becomes becomes more mess. <laughs> the the longer I, the more time I put into it, and it's like ah, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, I think too. If I started this piece um, with just drawing digitally, I think I would have probably done better. Like I, I think it just needs to start with drawing. I can't start with just colors and painting. Uh, even when I try to do that traditionally, I still like I, I still don't really love the results. I it always tends to be better if I start with drawing for some reason it's an inking. Um, let's see. Daniel says one one last season to go. Yeah. Um, oh wait, <laughs> I, I'm missing some things. <laughs> Daniel says Lord of the Rings. It's Lord of the Rings, but full of boobs and dragons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm cool with that. Um. 
let's see. Uh, James, I just watched Legend for the first time in years. That's a great movie. Would love to see more like that done with modern effects. Mm. I, I'm not quite sure if I remember what that is. Um, it's, is, that, is that the one with, uh, what's his name, um, Tom Cruise? Yeah, with um, young Tom Cruise and, and that uh, and essentially unicorn, <laughs> unicorn uh, the devil-looking character that was awesome. I watched that in the theater when it came out. I don't remember it hardly at all, but cool. I may have to watch it again sometime. Yeah, I, um, I thought about it. <laughs> it's been a long time. That was when I was a kid. Um, Adam says, Marsh, Adam Marsh here. What's up, man? Um, Mar- he says, Marsh, you have done a lot of portraits of rap icons. Who are some of your favorite West Coast rappers besides Ice Cube? <laughs> oh, um, I started out, um, my, I kind of started my deep, uh, discovery of hip hop with, um, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Um, and, Ice Cube isn't actually necessarily one of my favorites. It's just for whatever reason I decided to draw him that day. Um, But yeah, Snoop Dogg, I guess, would kind of be my favorite. Um, I love the Chronic album. I love his first album. I've recently actually gone into Snoop. That that was actually going to be something I was going to draw Snoop or whatever. I actually did it on a live stream here, but I didn't finish it. Um, But... Uh, I recently was listening to like some music he's done since like Doggy Style, and like he has makes some really good music. He's still to this day like he's just got a lot of actually really good albums that I just slept on because I I don't know I I started getting into East Coast hip hop you know way more so um, yeah I don't know Snoop's I really like Snoop I like um, MC Eight. I like too short. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I like the stuff from from the '90s and '80s. You know. Um, let's see. 3D and trace over is not cool in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. The 3D models are just tools. Yeah, no doubt. No one has a problem with using perspective tools, do they? You know, I mean, I don't I don't judge anybody for using any of these tools. I, I just want to say that out the, out the gate. But personally, there's certain things that that feel um, that feel just like I'm just not comfortable with it for my own self. Um, and I, you know, and sometimes I eventually change my my mind with that. So, you know, who knows? Maybe one day I'll change my mind. But for now, you know, I don't like the idea of drawing over a 3D model. If I'm now, if I'm looking at a 3D model, that's a different story. And then just drawing freehand. That I can do, but some people will, you know, pose the model and then draw over it, and that's not something I, I feel comfortable with personally. Um, I don't see any difference. Um, Daniel says maybe I'm just too old school. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, James says they are bead if they are used as a crutch. Bad if they're used as a crutch. But otherwise, they can help make art better until an artist outgrows them. That's not a bad, bad. That makes sense. Um, so it's just like tracing. You know, I mean, I don't have any problem with tracing anybody's art really for learning. You know, so yeah, that, I can see that. Um, any thoughts on that? Any of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I specifically was thinking to just really get the the structure um sort of on the on the digital page so that when you go and draw a face like you're doing now a portrait um that you know you won't get totally lost like when i do digital work it's like um it's just hard to to you know it's like i'm such a traditional guy that um i i lose myself digitally so it would just give me more of a foundation than you know it 
it wouldn't necessarily be me copying or, you know, line for line. It would just be sort of a guideline, you know, yeah. <laughs> like stay, Absolutely. stay within, within the lines. And <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. what I would, whatever I would be drawing would be, uh, would look more like what I'm attempting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a little bit more friendly with, um, and I would even probably do this possibly um, with kind of tracing a really rough, you know, thing just to get some of the proportions right. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit more okay with that. And then, you know, throwing away, you know, that under reference or whatever, and then going at it. But um, I will say it is time for me to go. Okay. <laughs> so, um, James says, yeah, just to be clear, I'm not judging you guys for having that opinion. I'd never said that. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for being fair, man. Um, and your opinion's always welcome here. Everybody's is. So awesome. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody, for hanging out in the chat. It's been a fun conversation going back and forth with the chat and me and Peter and stuff. I hope you guys dug it. Um, if you want to check out uh peter let's see peter's link for his youtube is in the description and i have links for pretty much everybody who's been on so far i just kind of keep all those links so hopefully they work though because sometimes youtube kind of shortens them so maybe mm. i should fix some of those but um but yeah you can find my illustration instagram um that link is there and also um you know, donkeyjawprojects.com and Marshall Lee underscore DJP. And Peter, where can they find you? Um, Peter probably had you everywhere on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. So you can find all that by just Googling. <laughs> awesome. And I'm digging that thing that the, the lady that you are inking. There. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. All right, guys. I appreciate every, you guys hanging out, and we will talk to you on the next one. Take care. Later.